Hey, what's up? It's me, Warren. I'm here again with another video. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the two different styles of, um, of no contact. A lot of people do it wrong or get it mixed up. See, it's a way you can do it for the right way, and there's a wrong way to do it. So um, the, let's start with the wrong way of doing it. So um, just say like when a narcissistic person do no contact, a.k.a. the silent treatment. You know, like you want to talk to them or something gone wrong in your relationship. And next thing you know, they stonewalling you. They don't want to talk about it. They just be completely quiet on you. Then next thing you know, they break up with you. Nothing gets resolved. They just being quiet, just ignoring you. And when y'all do talk, somehow it always your fault. It's always your fault. Seem like it always get turned around back on you. And when they dump you, you be feeling lost and confused and like, what happened? That's gaslighting and abuse. Silent treatment, stonewalling, just mean just, you know, just being quiet and, don't let, and not letting you get your point across and trying to resolve things. That's abuse. They, I mean, you can be right there in their face. Talking to them like, hey, we need to you know come up with a reason, you know, a situation, you know, um, a solution to solve this, you know, this problem that we have. And they be like, you the problem. You always start. I mean, if you wouldn't, you know, you just change your behavior, we wouldn't be in this situation we in now. You started this. Then they go back to being quiet. Then they hit you with another excuse. Maybe we just need space because we're not clicking. We're not connecting. Then next thing you know, they show up in a whole new relationship. Any of this sound familiar? So they do no contact. Now the whole time you just wondering what going on, what, what happened? You know, just out the blue. That's abuse. I know it's a guy... Is so he's somewhere on the internet. I'm not gonna like blow his spot up, but I think he said like you go 30 days, then you reach back out to them. After the 30 days, if you do 30 days no contact with a narcissistic ex, and on the 30 day they disregard you, they silent give you the silent treatment, and in 30 days you show up in their face, wouldn't that boost their ego? By you showing up in their face, what you just told that person? See, those strategies don't work on a narc. It don't, it don't work. Why? Because they don't care. They don't care about themselves. So how can a person who don't feel love for themselves feel love for you? Then you trying to do like a 30 day no contact and show back up in their face. All you're going to do is boost their ego. You just told them, look, I don't have no self-respect for myself because I know you disregard me or even if you disregard them. But I'm back. So in their mind, they're like, well, I can treat you any kind of way I want to now because I know you'll come back. You'll come back. So just, you know, expect the BS. Now, here's the positive side of doing no contact. You cut that narcissistic person off. It's going to hurt. Yes, because once upon a time, and maybe you still do, have love for that person. And that love don't go away overnight. Most people are like, well, the narc, you know, the person, you know, they're doing no contact over the other side. They got love for you. They don't have no love for you. A narcissistic type person don't have no love for you at all look at the actions isn't they in a, a whole nother relationship don't you know before they left you they already planned plot strategize to replace you put someone in your spot don't you know this already look at their actions is it showing any kind of indications that they care for you is it showing that you are priority in their life i know a lot of y'all have kids with them and stuff like that 
Don't you know a narcissistic person down there half half of them don't even get I mean don't even care about their kids. That's why they'll call you and talk to you without even mentioning them kids. They want that supply that you have to offer. They don't care about no kids. They'll go out and make more kids. You know, that's why you see some people with three, four baby moms, three, four baby daddies and all that stuff. They don't care about their body. They don't care. They don't care. They don't love themselves. But me, I say, cut them off completely. Now, when you have kids with someone, you can't cut them off completely. But you got to find a way to disentech, you know, dis detach yourself from your feelings from that person. That's the only way. But if you don't have no kids with the person, just cut them off completely. Get that toxic drug of a person out of your life so you can heal. You can heal. Then once you heal, you do the self-improvement. You better yourself. You improve yourself. You just get smarter, focus. You know, um, find out what your purpose on life is. Do that. Do the things that you love. Talk to people that understand it. Don't you can't talk to everybody about narcissistic abuse. Cause the only thing they gonna tell you is like, well, why didn't you just leave that person a long time ago? Why did you stay that long? You know, if you know that person was this and you know that person was that, why you had a baby for? Why you get her pregnant? Why you do this and why you do that? Look, it's easy. <laughs> it's easy to make decisions once the thing's been done. But while you in mid process of it, the answer is not there. So therefore, it's easy for them people to say stuff like that. That's why. I'm here, and people like me, we here, you know, I don't want to be fucking here, I mean, I don't want to be doing this all the time, but I just, I know what you feel, like, that I'm a wounded victim of narcissistic abuse, and it just sucks, you know, because those feelings is like drugs, like, like drugs, they just don't go away overnight, so you have to detach yourself from that person. Don't see that person. Don't look at their social media. Don't talk to friends, family members. You have to set up boundaries to get away from this person at all costs. They don't care about your well-being. They don't care about how you feel. It's all about them and how they feel. The center of all of this is them. They care only about themselves. They if they did have any kind of ounce of love, they love themselves. But I totally understand. I'm not going to hear the bash you outside of here like, well, you should have left that person 80 years ago. You know that person was a dope dealer. You know, man, she used to goddamn script at the club and you know what she used to do. I'm not going to go into full detail. But all I got to say, when you met that person, I guarantee you they wasn't like that. That's the whole meaning of love bombing. I'll go into details in another video in the steps they take to keep you trapped, stuck in life so they can always come back and use you, leech off your energy, and throw you away at the end. It's a cycle they use. Some of them do it and when they don't even know they're doing it. And you don't even know you're in it until it's all over with. But I'm here for you. You can always shoot me an email. No matter where you at in the world, I'm here for you. If you want to shoot me an email, you can always um, you can text me on WhatsApp, and I'll be right here for you. You can also check out my podcast. You know the links in um, the description somewhere. You can check out my podcast where I can say things that I can't say on YouTube. But YouTube be tripping, and you know. I ain't got to put up with a lot of weirdos. So, I understand. Put God in your life first. You just an everyday person. Put them there. Reach out for some help. I understand. Now, with that being said, peace and God.